Pratt. I um, live currently here in Fayetteville, North Carolina. I am originally not from Fayetteville, uh, but how many people are really from Fayetteville, right? I came here with the military. I have spent uh, 17 years in the military service. I was a chief warrant officer for the MI branch, the military intelligence branch, and was an interrogator. So what a switch to going from interrogator to mind uh, and body wellness, uh, you know, the wellness life. Uh, it was the perfect transition for me uh, because uh, I was treated for PTSD uh, as well as other things that, you know, I did Afghanistan, I did Iraq. And um, so there are some life experience. So no question that you might have will be an odd or a weird question. Please feel free at the end of our class to ask me anything or to even get in contact with me. Um, you can find me on Facebook under Hayat Hakim or uh, on Instagram under uh, Yoga Re-Evolution, okay? Uh, so my background now, I'm a breathing facilitator, breath facilitator. Uh, that means not I'm taking the power of breath and air from you. You have it already. I'll just guide you to use it properly. And also, I'm a yoga teacher, uh, 500 uh, experience. Uh, and I teach yoga teachers how to be teachers. And I um, do functional movements, just like a whole uh, wellness rim. And I'm currently in massage therapy training as well. So today, uh, what I would love to do, I would love to guide you through a meditation first. And um, today's meditation, in the background, uh, I will play a frequency and you can take notes and write this down or ask me later. So I, um, I believe that sound can be uh, very healing as well and, you know, works on our immune system and uh, creates different connection to our brain waves. So for today's healing frequency, uh, it's frequency 741HZ, and it is to elevate your immune system since we are moving through the immune system for today. And uh, I can send all the information out, okay? So what I love to do at the beginning of my meditation I love to bring the focus in and set an intention. So I will choose a card for all of us. And if you can just maybe roll your shoulders to the ears, then exhale and roll them back and down. And then I will choose a card for us. Let's see what the universe is telling us, okay? So this is surrender to your full power. Yes, and it says your life is calling for you to step into your full power rather than playing it small. All right. So let's go ahead and find a comfortable seat. If you sit uh, on the ground or anything, maybe have a pillow come underneath your hips, bring the knees underneath your hips, roll the shoulders to the ears. Take a nice deep inhale, elongating the spine. And as you exhale, just roll your shoulders back and down. Sometimes it's really hard to just start meditating on command. So whatever happens during this process, just recognize it, acknowledge it, and move on with the meditation. So I want you to visualize the four corners of the room that you are currently sitting in. You can close your eyes or leave them open, it doesn't matter. And then from the four corners of the room, I want you to move to your mind's eye, so bring it in. Maybe pay attention to your breath, okay? The breath should be nice inhales through your nose, nice exhales through your nose, and just a calm, regular breath. It doesn't have to be loud. It can be nice and soft, so maybe just take a nice deep inhale and sigh it out really loud. Ah. <sighs> Beautiful. And just nice, <sighs> steady breath. Hmm? Find your breath back to a nice, steady, calm one. And from here in your mind's eye, I want you to maybe focus on one thing that you hear in the distance. So if it's my voice that you hear in the distance, go ahead and focus on that. 
and maybe find one focus point that you can visually see. And then from hearing my voice, maybe bring that focus, that attention to your breath. So even as you inhale and as you exhale, just listen to that sound of that breath. And bring that focus into that. Now we're going to do a little bit of a body scan. So maybe wiggle your toes right here. Moving from your toes to your ankle, to your knees, bringing awareness to your knees. And moving from your knees to your hips. Maybe moving the hips a little bit to the left and to the right. belly up to your chest area and feeling that slight lifting and lowering of your chest as you breathe. And just for a moment, even if you feel funny, unclench that jaw, open your mouth and move it gently from the left to the right. And this releases a little bit of that stress, that pressure. And then gently close it back up. Maybe wiggle those eyebrows a couple of times. Soften that spot right between your eyebrows. And then find your focus back to your breath. Inhaling gently. Exhaling gently. And maybe even if it's just for a second, find your focus in this present moment, right here. And finding comfort in that stillness or any sound that you might pick up. And feeling gratitude in your heart for taking this time for yourself. Let's all join me. Take a deep inhale, raising our arms up towards the sky, all the way up. And I want you to just reach right and left. Rotate those wrists. Look up towards the sky. Open your heart. Bring the palms of your hands together and slowly lower them down to your heart center. And give yourself a big smile. Welcome. To our mindful, mindful, and immune system conversation, okay? I'm saying conversation because I want you to join me once I open it up for questions, okay? So I will share my screen with you. Oh, I don't have that. Oh, do I have that right there? Yes. Yeah. I just have to see if I have the authorization to do so. Oh, here we go. Okay, can everybody see that? Yes. Yes. All right, questions. That was it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so. peace of mind. So I put a little small tiny uh, quote on the bottom of this. It's the wish list, peace of mind. Uh, mindfulness and immune system. 
let's talk a little bit about mindfulness. So mindfulness, uh, we can think about 10,000 different things on what mindfulness means. Um, it can be just paying attention to yourself, you know, acknowledging when something is going on with your body, uh, acknowledging when something is going on in your mind, feelings, thoughts, uh, bodily sensation. You know, you have all your senses um, and all your senses are a network that brings mindfulness uh, and awareness to signals of that your body is sending you that m something might not be going as balanced as you wish them to go or as balanced as your body needs them to go. So uh, it's basically achieving this focus that you bring this awareness to your body and your mind. Um, and uh, what I love a lot is our mind is present and not rehearsing the past or imagining the future. So um, I know very well when I teach in my yoga classes and I observe my students, I see some of them with their body present, but with their mind, either thinking about something that they have experienced right before they came to class, or think of something that they have to accomplish after the class. So that's kind of what we're saying with um, rehearsing the past or imagining the future. So some of you might be sitting here and thinking about, oh my God, okay, so what do I have to do after this meeting? Um, do I have to go and, and shop? Do I have to go and run an errand? So mindfulness is knowing and being aware that your body wants to be in that present moment and experience life as it happens right now. So what mindfulness can do for you, it can set you into this relaxation state of mind. So in relaxation, that's where your body has the time to strengthen your immune system, to respond and to hear um, the signals of your body and see where the balance might be off. So as you see right here, the response engages the parasympathetic nervous system. Uh, so the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for restoring your body's balance levels. So uh, you know the sympathetic nervous system and the parasympathetic nervous system. Those are the two systems that connect to your immune system, your lymphatic system. And we'll talk about this a little more. Um, so it sets the hormones and it gives you that good feel that allows you to rest, that allows you to be calm, that allows you to slow down a really speeding heart rate. Therefore, your respiratory rate, the inhales and exhales that you do are becoming more uh, intense uh, in a way of inhaling deeper and exhaling deeper and not at a rapid pace where your lungs are not being used as their full capacity. Your blood pressure, if you have really high blood pressure, mindfulness will help you slow down this blood pressure to a balanced sequence. And then muscle tension. So if you look at yourself right now, I can sadly not see you all, but I want you to look at yourself in your screen as you see yourself. Look at your shoulders. Are you holding your shoulders up to your ears mostly? Are you maybe hunching your body a little bit, right? Or are your hips might not be balanced where your buttocks is swaying to one side and one side is carrying all the weight or is your balance even when sitting down balanced between those two uh you know sides of your body the left and the right side so when you hold tension in your body uh stress so stress makes you hold tension in your body and when there's tension in your muscle your response system and that system that you have of healing will take their focus there 
and take it away from something that might be more important for your immune system to focus on at that time. So let me, okay. So let's, uh, let me try to see if I can look a little bit at you and um, ask you a little bit of questions as far as um, the mindfulness, if you are understanding what the mindfulness is. So, so I cannot see anyone right now. Okay, that's fine. We'll just kind of keep going and I ask the questions after. So let's go to the immune system, okay? The immune system. So immune system protects the body against diseases. Um, let's think about a little bit um, what is part of your immune system. So when you look at your immune system and your body as a whole, once again, feel free to absolutely look at yourself. Look at your arm, right? And your, see your arm and what is the first thing that m covers your arm? It's your skin, right? And then your skin underneath, you have your white blood cells flowing through your body, your, your antibodies, the complement system, the lymphatic system, which the lymphatic system uh, is so connected to just your outer layer of your body. And then you have the spleen, the thymus, and the bone marrow. So your white blood cells are key players in your immune system. Uh, if there's a lack of bl white blood cells, your immune system is kind of uh, not as balanced and functional. So you want to make sure that you support the growth and the health of your white blood cells. And then um, the white blood cells are part of your lymphatic system. Remember, you can always ask me questions when we, when, once I get back to you. So maybe for now, just listen a little bit. So um, antibodies. So uh, your antibodies help the body to fight toxins and your micro, microbins. So toxins, think about toxins at something that you inhale toxins that you might uh, take in through your mouth, so food, toxins that your environment brings, okay? So they influence your immune system as well. And the complement system, kind of, uh, the antibodies kind of look at those toxins and bring awareness to your body. Like, hey, listen, there's something toxic in my body and I would love for you to address that. So think of all the immune system as one communication system that needs your awareness. And that's where the mindfulness comes in, okay? And we will tie it together a little bit more later. So I am super passionate about the lymphatic system. Our lymphatic system uh, brings our entire body together. So the lymphatic system is a network of uh, little tubes, delicate tubes that run through your entire body. And well, they're located at certain areas of your body throughout the body, but they manage the fluid levels of your body. They react to bacteria that's traveling in your body um, and they deal with uh, cancer cells as well as deal with cell production, uh, and the cell production in your body is what regulates the disease and disorders that you have coming into your body. And it absorbs uh, the fats um, when you're on a certain nutrition diet uh, or uh, you have a certain uh, metabolism factor in your you know, system. The lymphatic system is what controls it. So it seems like the lymphatic system is pretty greedy and has it hands, has it hands in everything that kind of make your body function as a whole. Um, so you have in your lymphatic system, you have your lymph nodes and those are located at certain areas. Um, some of the lymph nodes that uh, you might have found before, if your body is fighting off a certain, uh, you know, uh, 
sickness or a certain, uh, it's dealing with certain toxins and it's tried to detox. Uh, I can tell you, for example, uh, once I went natural, I used to use, I'm raising my arm and showing you my underarm. Uh, once I went natural as far as m using deodorants, my uh, lymph nodes underneath my armpit start swelling up. So what happened for over 20 years, I used a certain um, deodorant, which uh, caused the lymphatic system to be covered, you know, with toxins. And uh, you will have to read up more than I can probably provide to you in, as far as details. So once I stopped using this old deodorant, my toxins start coming out. And what happened, the lymphatic system responded and therefore my lymph nodes underneath my armpit start swelling up. And they were very uh, sore and painful. But that was showing me that my lymphatic system was actually functioning because it was trying to focus on getting those toxins pushed out of my body. So if you ever tried to stop using deodorant and used to a natural matter of deodorant, you might have had those lymphatic knots uh, developing at a bigger uh, size underneath your armpits, okay? And then we have the spleen, and the spleen is your blood filtering organ, and it removes like old cells, uh, red, uh, the damaged cells in your body. So it is important uh, part of the disease fighting system. Okay. And then you have the bone marrow and that's like a spongy little uh, part that is found in your bones. And um, this was just a small little overview of your immune system, but it will help you really connect how mindfulness is important in regards to your immune system. Okay, so here we're gonna go over the connection between mindfulness and your immune system. So um, achieving optimal mental and spiritual health is a powerful modifier to your immune system. How do we get to achieving optimal mental and spiritual health? First of all, that is a lot of expectation to strive to be absolutely at an optimal spiritual and mental health. So it's like going to a yoga class. When I ask someone, hey, are you coming to yoga? And they say, no, I'm not flexible to go to yoga. So I'm telling you, no, you, you, you come to yoga to become more flexible. There's not an expectation of you already being flexible to arrive to yoga. So the same is with mindfulness. Drop all the expectation, whatever you see on TV, uh, on Instagram, on any social media of this person being able to sit in absolute stillness for 11 minutes. And for you, that that is your vision of expectation on how you can bring mindfulness to your immune system. Just wipe all those expectations out anywhere any place that you are currently find yourself in, you can implement little mindfulness behavior at a time. And I will go over those behaviors that you can implement in a second. But I want you to remember this, achieving optimal mental and spiritual health is a powerful modifier to your immune system. Strive to it. You do not have to accomplish it 100% to see a positive change in your body. So the brain is connected to every organ in your body. Um, so your brain is basically communicating with your entire system that is your, immu part, your immune system is part of that. So when there's a connection lost between your brain and the rest of your body, your brain cannot detect anything that might be wrong with your body. So there's a communication interrupt, right? So you might find yourself not listening to certain signals that your body sends you, 
Okay. Uh, mindfulness is not the cure and the power of all, but combined with uh, a lot of the Western medicine, mindfulness can be a great supporter in anything that you're going through with your immune system. So uh, open mindfulness can open the communication between your brain and the supporting immune system, okay? Uh, so mental bur burnout, and this is the part I wish I could see all of you guys. If you're, so if you can see each other, that's great. But to just ra raise your hand, if at any time within these last even three weeks, you felt so stressed out, you know, just think about it, that you felt your body just responding to that stress. Yeah. So if you just raised your hand, this stress and not having a little bit of resiliency to deal with that stress affects your immune system. And therefore your body can um, have more, uh, it's more uh, open to um, any toxins or diseases that might come your way. That's how mindfulness connects to your immune system. It opens the connection. If your mind is too burnt out, it does not get this communication, the connection, and therefore it weakens your immune system, okay? And then we talked about the sympathetic system and the parasympathetic system. Learning to find the balance between these two systems can achieve, be achieved through mindfulness. So let's talk a little bit about the sympathetic sympathetic and the parasympathetic system. So sympathetic system, and I'm trying to break it down like, so it just like clicks because that's how it clicked for me one day. Um, flight and, uh, so flight and fright, you know, the fight or flight system, that's your sympathetic system. So to take it absolute away from us, no that is not what we're trying to achieve through mindfulness. Uh, we're trying to balance that sympathetic system. So your fight or flight, that is uh, your sympathetic system. When you are in a um, stressful environment, your, basically your survival instinct is what is fed by your sympathetic system. So stressful situations, um, loss, you know, uh, finding out that you might be, uh, you know, losing a job or finding out that your entire life is changing and now you're used to regular order. All this stimulates your sympathetic system. Your sympathetic system uh, basically is what prepares you for this survival. You can kind of see it a little bit as an animal instinct too. Um, it, 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 it shoots these endorphins and you're getting this, this um, anticipata anticipation, which in certain balanced ways, it helps you because you become uh, to thrive, like internally to thrive, to accomplish. Um, it's that competitive side. It stirs that competitive side, that survivor side. Living in absolute sympathetic system and being on survival mode will bring so much stress to your body that it weakens your immune system. Because now you're constantly feeding your body uh, with this really fast, your brain is functioning at 150 miles an hour. Um, you're feeding your body with all this anxiety a little bit, you know? So who can really live on a survival-based system for so long? Um, so say for instance, veterans, you know, uh, being in the military. The military teaches you uh, to be in that state because the sympathetic system brings awareness moment awareness uh, to your surroundings and it makes you um, operate and uh, react to anything that comes your way. So imagine 
for maybe 20 years, if it's four years, if it's one year, one deployment, 20 deployments, or you being on the site next to someone that has been deployed. You had this constant state of surviving. So it's like your lifestyle. Um, and what happens when you try to slow down, your body doesn't know how to right away, or it doesn't know how to get off this stressful rhythm because you have lived this rhythm of life for your entire life. So what happens to our resiliency? Our resiliency is based on our sympathetic system when you live off survival, where your resiliency should be centered and balanced between your sympathetic system and your parasympathetic system. Your parasympathetic system is where you find your calm. It is the one that lowers your blood pressure. It is the nervous system that boosts your immune system, that lets your body rest, okay? So you want to find a beautiful balance that works for you in your life between those two systems. And that's where your immune system receives its support. Yeah. So let's move on from here. So now we're moving into our mindful immune system toolbox. Okay. So uh, we did just a little tiny meditation and um, to find, uh, to find a successful meditation practice and successful is whichever it is in your eyes. And let me exit out because I would love to see you guys for this part, okay? So I'm gonna move out of the question and minimize this a little so I can see you. Okay, now I can see you. Okay, because I like this part to be rather more interactive because I just fed you all this information, right? So let's talk about this a little bit, okay? So meditation, if I could see you all. So let me ask, who has uh, tried to meditate for it? Just by raise of hand, who has the experience? Good. So if you would like to share your experience in meditation that you had with us, and one difficulty that you might have had with your meditation, meditation and I will respond to it that might help others out so maybe Sharika if you want to go and tell us a little bit about your experience um <clears throat> yes can you hear me yes mm -hmm. okay yes so um usually when I try to meditate I sometimes listen to like calming music along with it um and it's been very relaxing. Um, it helps to calm down if you've had a stressful day. Um, I tend to like candles as well when I do it, just to bring me down from a days of work or anything else that have stressed me out. Um, where I've had interruptions is that, you know, if you have kids, <laughs> they may yeah. come in the room or something and it breaks your concentration on what you were trying to, you know, focus on. So that's been my experience, but Okay, so it's more like the surrounding that you have where you can conduct your meditation mm -hmm. and how to, yeah. So what I can tell you about that, just to give you a little, whoever has kids too, um, start, you know, find that time for yourself to meditate just for you. But maybe try to find this game of Simon Says with your kids where they can see that the meditation time is really important and implement them a little bit and say, Simon says it's time to meditate, you know, and don't do it too long. It can be like five seconds. Simon says it's quiet time for five seconds. And then you count down five, four, three, two, one. And guess what? Those five seconds, all they were focused on is that five, four, three, two, one. And in a sneaky way, you just 
made them meditate. Mm. I know it's a little sneaky, right? But we all use our tools and I love sneaky tools because mm -hmm. in some way you just brought awareness to them and mm -hmm. maybe uh, bring awareness to them on having you have that meditation time. So when it comes to that meditation, how, and anyone can answer that, how do you think this meditation, this being in that present moment helps you with your immune system? Not all at once. <laughs> I know I have a European sense of humor, so if it comes over a little crazy, just whoever wants to answer it, go for it. How do you think that, that helps you with your immune system? Hey, my name's Jenna. You guys can't see me because I'm only doing the audio. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. We can hear you, love. So to me, it means that you're, um, you're really, when you're, it's allowing your parasympathetic system to go to work and allow for um, that calm to be restored and for everything to be rebalanced. But if you're in that fight or flight mode, you're, you're basically, you're not allowing yourself to do that. So that's where the meditation comes in to allow for your parasympathetic um, system to actually work. Absolutely. Go ahead. Sorry for cutting you off. Oh, no, that's how I, that's just how I perceive it. Yeah, and, and this, is, this is what we just talked about. And when you look at the slideshows, so that meditation uh, shoots up that parasympathetic system and your parasympathetic system brings that calmness to your body. And therefore, the system supports your immune system because now that communication between your brain and your body, what is happening? It opens it up right? And what do we do as humans? When we meditate, we, ha we want to have a purpose for everything that we do, right? But sometimes we don't understand the purpose. So why am I meditating? Oh, it's a fade. Everybody's meditating now. But imagine now you know that you have those two systems in your body, the, you know, fight and uh, flight, and that parasympathetic the sympathetic system that relax and calm and right in between there you'll find your immune system to be becoming stronger so now you know that with meditation you can you can work on balancing that so every breath every second that you take in meditation helps your immune system does everybody kind of understand that yeah okay and listen, I'm not a medical uh, profession, so if I put it in really simple terms, it is what it is, everyone, okay? Just, I hope you all understand it, yeah. Um, so maybe somebody else, somebody else said, Debbie, um, have Debbie Orman, yes? Uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your meditation. You have such a beautiful smile, so I had to call on you. Thank you. First of all, Margot, I love the boxer. Just want to say Aww. that. Um, so I have trouble meditating. Like I understand the benefits of it, mm -hmm. but I am I'm hyperactive, and so just slowing down is very difficult. And then once I ever do start to meditate, I fall asleep. Just falling asleep, it's okay, right? Because falling asleep, yoga nidra will be really good for you. Um, and we'll talk about that just in a second. Okay. But falling asleep, what happens to your body? Your body is so calm, right, mm -hmm. that you actually achieve what meditation wanted you to do. It activated your parasympathetic yeah. system. Right. So when you fall asleep, don't be hard on yourself. Go kind of like, yes, I <laughs> love your parasympathetic system. You, you really just engage that and raise uh, some resiliency in that, right? Okay. Um, so I would start to everyone that has a little bit of difficulty. Sometimes it's really nice to start your meditation with a guided meditation. That can be music. That It can be your favorite song. It doesn't matter what this favorite song is. You play that favorite song 
and try to sit there and listen to that favorite song. It doesn't matter what it is. And guess what? You just meditated to that favorite song. Because what happened to your mind? It focused on what? That favorite song, right? So you are already somewhere that, that helped you meditate. So believe me, meditation is not being that person that can sit on the top of the mountain and sit there for hours in absolute stillness. Every little thing where you can bring your focus in, even if it's just the breath, is meditation, okay? Meditation, really good immune system. That's where it connects with mindfulness, yeah? Anybody else want to share with us or? No? Okay. Well, your, oh, I, yeah. um, your last answer actually answered my question or my, my issue it was when I, when I do that, because I do use an app or try to use an app, um, Calm, you know, to, to meditate. But in that period of silence, um, my mind starts to wander. It either goes to the past, something that happened, or it goes to the to-do list. Um, so constantly, it seems like the entire five minutes that they've got you in, in total silence is, is a battle of coming back to the present, you know, constantly. So I kind of like your, your method, I think for beginners to start off just staying with, you know, something that is audio um, and not so that you are staying in that moment. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. Forget the five minutes, forget the time. Limit. Okay. Don't tell any professional that I said, forget everything. <laughs> I'm just saying you have to find what is good for you. Okay. So even that one minute uh, of reading, maybe a quote or one minute of reading a book or one minute of staring at your puppy and just petting it, that can be your meditation. Do you see? So, and that can bring that, that nervous, you know, that um, parasympathetic system, it can bring calm to you. So just something you're used to. So even if you have, if you have an animal, you know, and you hold it and you say, and it brings your calmness and you just meditate on that, you know, there you go. Okay. Uh, closing your eyes, focusing on, okay. Focus on a place that brings you absolute peace, the ocean, the beach. And just for that one second, take your mind there. That's meditation, okay? And that helps with your immune system, okay? So let's talk about the next thing. Um, uh, movement, movement of the body. Movement of the body and your immune system. So for me, of course, I want to bring yoga up since I am, you know, uh, very passionate about yoga. Uh, so what helps bring, bring oxygen to your body? Movement, right? So moving your body, what happens to your respiratory system? Your respiratory system has to breathe more, right? Because now you're being active. So to raise your immune system, uh, you have to be active and move the body. Moving the body doesn't mean that you have to go and sprint down uh, for five, 10 miles. Moving the body can be something as simple as stretching your arms in the morning over your head, which we automatically do, and just practice some walking, you know, walking, uh, yoga, yoga practice, the gentle yoga practice, restorative practice, um, anything that gets your body moving. So I challenge all of you to maybe every hour, it doesn't matter what job you have, what you do to get your body moving. Do something that you absolutely love. Either dance, either do a yoga pose, either just get up your chair, or if you want to raise your arms and start yelling, that moves your vocal cords, so that's really good for you too. Anything you can do, just move your body. So moving your body brings oxygen to your body. Oxygen in your body 
uh, let those red cells, blood cells, white blood cells move through your entire body, okay? So you need oxygen in your body to get your blood system to flow. Okay, and then what we have next, let's see. Nutrition. Oh. Okay, here we go. So nutrition, let's talk a little bit about nutrition. Your digestive system is called what? Your second brain, right? Okay, so I don't know if you were aware of that yet, but your digestive system is basically your second brain. So there's communication going between your small uh, intestine and your brain. Anything you take in sends signals to your brain, which brings, um, uh, you know, can have those, uh, the brain, parts of the brain that bring good feels, uh, depression, um, sadness, happiness, all of this connects, okay? So, vitamin C is super important to your immune system. How do you take vitamin C in? Uh, I will send a recipe of this uh, juice or this, uh, how many people have a blender or a juicer? Okay, so I will send this recipe to Rika. I'm just gonna go over it really fast. But what I do every day, uh, nutrition wise, first I start my day off drinking celery juice. I'm not expecting you all to bring, uh, drink 24 ounce of celery juice. A lot of people don't like that. But I drink, <laughs> I see Crystal. Crystal's like, oh, heck no. <laughs> um, but uh, so I, every morning uh, I wait till 10 a.m. And the first thing I fuel my body with is celery juice. Uh, and then I'll make this uh, immune system boost drink. Uh, I put orange, oranges, uh, apple. So two oranges, two apples, turmeric. Um, the turmeric will only be good if you add pepper. So pepper intensifies it, so it still has its benefits without pepper. So a little dash of pepper and some sort of oil. There has to be some steady oil. So what I put into my juice in that thing, I put MCT oil, which is coconut oil. Okay? So two oranges, two apples, turmeric, and I use the root, I use the live root, okay? Uh, ginger, a dash of pepper, black pepper, a dash, a spoon of MCT oil, one full lemon, yeah? And I mix all of that up. If you do not have a juicer, do not worry about it. Take a mixer, put all that stuff, but peel it. Peel all, the, don't peel the apples, but peel the orange and the lemon. Put all of that in a mixer and get it going. And then drink it right away, okay? And don't chug it down. You can take your time and drink it. This is so full of uh, vitamin C. Uh, turmeric helps against inflammation. Ginger is for your digestive system. The coconut oil that I use for my drink helps with your uh, in inflammation as well. So vitamin C is so important to your immune system. This drink I drink every day and it has been uh, very uh, beneficial for my immune system, for my digestive system. Uh, and you're getting all your vitamin C that you need. Uh, if you take supplements, just think about for one week, switching that to this drink, you know, and I will send the recipe to Rika so she can email it out to you. Um, so nutrition wise, uh, who follows like a certain uh, diet or a certain, like, what do you guys want to know nutrition wise when it comes to um implementing something for your immune system. You can ask me any questions you want and I'll answer them as far as my knowledge and my scope of modalities allows me, okay? I have a question. What is your take on caffeine? 
Are you a fan of it or are you against it? Okay, so I don't drink coffee anymore. Uh, and this is, I'm sharing my opinion with you, okay? So I used to drink coffee all the time. I love coffee. And I'm a, a healer and I'm, uh, you know, in nutrition things. And we love to talk about poop. So if you're uncomfortable with talking about poop, I'm sorry, guys. I'm very comfortable with it. What happens when you drink coffee? Do you know how you love when you drink coffee? You run to the bathroom and you have, you know, you're like, yes, my digestive system, I'm cleansing out. So what happens with coffee? Uh, the plant, the coffee plant uh, has, coffee has certain toxins in it, right? Um, it's not like the man-made toxins. It's just the plant itself. It's a way of protecting itself from, from the outside world. So you drink that coffee and now your digestive system is like, oh man, there's toxins. There's toxins coming in my body through that coffee. So what does your digestive system do? It wants to eliminate those toxins. Where do they come through? your poop, right? So your toxins, the coffee uh, comes into your body and in your mind, you're like, yes, you know, it helps me digest, but it is your body being stimulated to fight off those toxins and therefore it helps you poop. But because it is those coffee toxins that you're wearing, that you're moving off. So there's different type of caffeine, okay? So if you get it from uh, constant uh, um, drinking of coffee, I'm not saying eliminate coffee altogether, minimize it, you know, have a little coffee if you have to have it, right? But do not consume a whole like pot of coffee all day because you making your body focus on taking those toxins that you're getting through that uh, prepared caffeine and it focus on eliminating all of those instead of, and you're not giving your digestive system a break, right? So if you want to say, well, I still want to do some caffeinated products, look for teas, look for green teas, you know? They have this uh, caffeine that is gentler to your digestive system, you know, that gives you that pickup. Um, if you're a coffee drinker, you can get very addicted to coffee. It's like, do you know how you have those, those you feening it and you get, so when you get off coffee at the beginning, you will start getting headaches, you know, and you think like, oh my God, the coffee makes me feel better because it nurtures that addiction to that caffeine. Yeah, I know that's probably something you didn't really want to hear because you love coffee, trust me coffee fan for years especially in the military oh my god 24 hour duties there's nothing better than having that cup of coffee to you know stay stay awake okay what about what about matcha as a um replacement for coffee doesn't it give you kind of, i haven't tried it yet but i've heard that you know it kind of gives yes. you that so matcha, same i love matcha i love matcha but it has antioxidant uh subsidies as well and your caffeine comes from, I can't tell you, oh, it's super awesome and it comes from a good source, but it is a better source than uh, when you come to drinking coffee nonstop, okay? So matcha is very good. It has those green, powerful antioxidants, okay? And matcha, you can almost make it taste like a good old cup of coffee when you use the right recipe, okay? And if you do coffee, maybe try to have a little bit warm water with lemon before you take that coffee in, okay? Just to prepare your body with a little bit of ginger. Everyone should do this anyways. First thing in the morning, have that cup of coffee. Uh, have, oh, sorry, have that cup of warm water with a little bit of lemon and ginger to prepare your belly to what you're gonna feed it, okay? And this is very an Ayurvedic lifestyle. I don't know if you guys ever heard of it, 
but I studied in India for a month. I studied the Ayurvedic lifestyle. And so it kind of says, be forgiving to your body and sometimes do what your body thinks, but make sure you prepare it and you, if you have a coffee, just a little bit or prepare your body for this, your digestive system for this. Does that make sense? Okay. And, I have, sorry. Any you other? Do, go ahead. Would you do that regardless? Um, so, like, I've noticed that caffeine will also trigger my migraines, so I stay away from caffeine. So I drink decaf green tea. Um, I love coffee, so occasionally I have a, a cup. Of, I'll do like a decaf, just decaf coffee. For the um, taste, right? Right, just for the taste, because I, I love the taste of it. It's not actually caffeine calms me down, being hyperactive, but I love the taste of it. So is that equally as harmful having decaf coffee versus full-on coffee? No, you know, no, just, just have it every now and then. And I'm a firm believer, balance your life. Mm -hmm. It's the same with, you know, um, there's so many things in excess that is harmful to you, right? Um, mm -hmm. Minimize that coffee intake, use it as a treat, you know? Um, I'm gonna treat myself to a little coffee but I know I will prepare my body, right? Right. So have that warm glass, water, belly is nice. You have a little bit of ginger, you know? And, and I'll have uh, it, have like a cup of decaf coffee every now and then. I've really yeah. tapered off from and I've switched more to herbal teas, mm -hmm. like, like peppermint and lemon and uh, decaf green tea. But yeah, I found if I, if I don't drink it at all, then I end up craving it. Just because I love the taste, it's not anything. It's just I love coffee. So like yeah. on the weekends, I might have a cup of coffee, or like today I woke up, I was like, I would like to have a cup of coffee today. You know, so it's not. But yeah. and and you know, it's funny how you said that. That's where it all comes back to mindfulness. Everyone, be mindful of you know what? How am I gonna balance that? Because we are discovered, right? Mindfulness is finding that balance, listening to your body. Um, bring in like movement to your body, meditation to your body, um, the nutrition that you take in, find that balance, balance between mindfulness. If I would tell all of you, no, stop doing this, stop doing that, what would it trigger? Like, like the expectation, your, your system that says, oh my God, survival, I can't do this, I can't do that. How can you sustain that? You can. So every now and then, do not quote me on this, be bad, just to know how to balance it out. Yeah. So if you do something bad, do not come back and say, Hayat said I can do it, <laughs> you know. Um, do we have any other questions on that uh, nutrition part? Okay. All right. So let's go um, to the lymphatic system or something you can do for your body. Uh, what I to every morning as well, I dry brush, right? So dry brushing, I don't know if you ever heard of this. And uh, so in the morning I get up and I take a, a brush um, with hard, um, what is the American word for it? Uh, so give me a couple of words, a, a brush that's a little harder. Yeah, 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 exactly. And I start brushing my skin. I start at my feet. And dry, dry brush. That means no soap, no um, water to soften it. It has to be dry. And I brush my legs up towards my hips and towards my heart. So I do this for my entire body. My arms, I brush up. And here, I brush down, lymphatic system here, under the arms, down. And it brings up your... Uh, it engages your lymphatic system and it helps your body detox. So what you're doing, you're assisting the system that is already in place. We have, we are born and we are made. This, your body is the best thing in this entire world because your body was made to self-heal. Your job is to help it out a little, right? So something simple as dry brushing helps, first of all, takes off dead skin, you know, let's talk about that, uh, uh, takes off the dead skin, 
it starts activating like your your lymphatic system because now you're brushing your body gets movement um your blood starts flowing through your entire body it's it's a beautiful thing and it's one little life hack dry brushing okay and it's uh, ayurvedic as well uh, so it's an uh, old indian health system that i've taken on in my life does anybody have questions about this dry brushing? It's just a little life hack, you know, that I'm giving um, you. I have a Is question. It, so I'm from Hungary and um, yeah, Margo just had the brush. So people in Europe um, are familiar with the dry brushing, I think more so than in the States. But my mom told me about it when I was younger and she said it helps with cellulite because it helps with circulation. And cellulite has something to do with low circulation or the limbic system or something. So my mom's done it her whole life and it yeah. worked for her. It's, a, it's an old <laughs> so that's another reason life. to do it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's an old, like a lot of the things that I'm bringing up, we have known for, for age, like centuries, you know, these are all ancient um, techniques that have been passed down and used um, and they are free for you. Who in their mind always says, you know what, being healthy is expensive. We all said it, be, you know, between buying those organic food and, oh, this is so expensive. I can run at the time that I waste. You can implement all these little life hacks that we talked about today to boost your immune system and they all free, you know, and then you have guidance. You have guidance like our meeting today, you know. Uh, it, like to help you implement some of these things, you know. So uh, dry brushing, I'm a big fan. One brush dry from the bottom, always brush towards your heart, you know, um, and use it. It brings the circulation. It helps against cellulite. That's like an extra benefit, you know. Uh, circulation helps and stimulates your lymphatic system, metabolism. When you brush your belly, I'm going to sit up. So when you brush your belly, go in the circle as your digestive system. So it should go counterclockwise, okay? All right. Any more question about like the nutrition or the little life hacks that we talked about today? Um, I do just have a question. I, I've I have a dry brush and I've been using it. Now, how do you handle the, um, the chest area though? I've stayed away from that. I mean, you just go up this way, away from no, your heart? No. Uh, you yeah. go down gently. You go down. Yes. Because okay. our skin here is super sensitive. Yeah. But, um, so your chest is also connected to your, so when you, everyone look at how, when something happens to us, what do we do? You we leave the chest. Tap yourself a little bit and see how sensitive it responds to this area. So when you dry brush, this is a little bit more gentle, but down towards the heart, okay? And gentle. Do not go at it like crazy, okay? But the other thing, the heart, a question about, Hyatt, about the lymphatic system, and this is more from Chinese medicine, is mm -hmm. um, the gua sha and the bamboo tapping. Um, I mean, are you... I don't know the bamboo tapping is really um, lymphatic system more than it is kind of waking up that, you know, your cellular system mm -hmm. or your blood circulation. But the gua sha, have you used that at all to do like, you know, some lymph you know, lymphatic drainage around your neck area or anything? I haven't personally used it yet. That's one of the modalities that we actually learn in massage therapy school. Um, I would suggest looking into it because it does help with your, oh, massage therapy, lymphatic draining, perfect. So it's in accordance and in combination with that. So I would look into it. I haven't experienced it myself, so I can't really say, oh my God, it has helped me. But uh, as I'm moving further with that, I would love to, to get it done by someone. Yeah. And m most definitely implement those modalities in your life. Massages. Who gets massages? Hello, immune system boost. Yeah. So let's talk about, um, and, and this is perfect. Let's talk about self-massages while we cannot go to a massage therapist. Okay. Who does self-massages? Ladies, get to it. <laughs> 
So if you don't have any touch, how important is touch? Okay, listen. Our immune system needs, is built how? Our immune system needs other people or touch or interaction with other people to build antibodies, right? Right now, what are we not getting? Touch and other people, right? So what could we do to get our body just this nurturing touch? We could do self-massage. Self-massage can be something as simple as taking your hand and just moving your fingers, you know, through your palm. Take your hand, like if you move back here, what is here? There's lymph nodes right here. There's your, um, your thyroids in this area too. Do not massage here, okay? Like, I do not want you, but right here, like the hairline, you know, after you brush it, just see how it feels to really just go down your shoulders. Yes, everyone. Doesn't that feel good? Like, you know, like I live by myself with four animals. Trust me, I massage myself. I go down my arm, right? Small pressure. Squeeze your arm, you know, move it left and right. This builds your immune system, yes? So take your time and do this. Open your heart, you know. Our heart stays very close. Open your heart. If you have someone that uh, lives with you, if it's a daughter, my daughter wants me to massage her all the time. She doesn't live with me anymore, you know. She's a grown woman now. But um, so when she comes home, she's like, Mom, you know, and I massage her shoulders for her. So when you have somebody at home, try to trade with them, you know. They're not professional, but tell them, here, can you just rub my arm, you know. Can you just take my shoulders? Go and do it yourself, yeah. So homework until we see each other again next week, hopefully I will see all of you again, is to do self-massage, okay. Like take this as a homework. And then tell me next week, like every day, I want you to just take something in your body, a part in your body, and just practice self-massage. And just do it every day for this one week. And when we meet next Wednesday, I want you guys to tell me about it. You know, like, how, like, has it helped you a little? Do you have somebody in the house who's been really enjoying you, you know, just rubbing their hand? The ears, listen, we wear earrings or whatever, right? Go right here behind your ears. Actually, do this right now. And go behind your ears and just massage. Do you, do you feel there's so many nerves that we are never touching, right? I think that's a pretty awesome homework to have, right? Yeah. And if somebody asks you what you're doing, say, that's been my homework, okay? So these are just some life hacks, some tools about the immune system. Do you have any other, I know we went over time a little and I'm absolutely fine with it because I'm here for you guys, but do we have any other questions about anything today? I wanna ask about the dry brushing. So, yes. like, I've heard that some people, after they do dry brushing, they will shower to also, like, rinse the dead skin off that they've brushed. Mm -hmm. Is that okay to do? And what are your thoughts about using coconut oil afterwards? Yes. So, um, absolute shower. I do mine before I shower. Uh, in the summertime, I use coconut oil. Mm -hmm. In the wintertime, I use sesame oil. The reason is um, in the summertime, my pores are already open. And uh, so there's uh, coconut oil brings a cooling effect, right? Sesame oil brings a warming effect. So I don't want to kind of shock my body in the wintertime when it's, it's dry anyways with this 
coconut oil that really doesn't nurture my body that well, but in the summertime it does. Okay. So, so I would try to see if you can do the dry brushing, do the shower, mm -hmm. see if you can find the oil that uh, you can put on actually in the shower, you know, those, those oils, those wet oils, right? Yeah, so they have the oils that basically instead of coming out and then slathering the coconut mm -hmm. on, uh -huh. Try to see if you can find the oil that you can put on in the shower before you even dry off. Okay. Right? And then in the shower, the last 10 seconds of your shower, if you can make them cold, your system, <laughs> your system will love it. Against inflammation, hair growth, skin softness, it, yeah, and you can work yourself up to that, like lukewarm and then, yeah, okay? okay. But yeah, all for it, but see which one, try different oils. I challenge you to try different oils, like coconut oil, sesame oil, what balances you out more, makes you feel better, okay? Okay, okay. And where can you find the sesame oil for your sesame skin? Oil. Neutrog Neutrogena, mm -hmm. they, have, um, they have a shower sesame oil that I've been using. I don't want to advertise anyone, but uh, you can use them or you can buy sesame oil from like a health store, you know, um, and just combine it and mix it up maybe with sesame oil has a little bit of a different smell to it, you know, mm -hmm. but you can combine it with maybe a a drop of an essential oil to make it smell better. Okay. Maybe apple crate. You think apple crate would have that sesame oil? Okay. Yes, apple crate most definitely will have it. Mm -hmm. uh, so look at the apple crate as well. Okay. And then Hayat, um, in the messenger, in the message mm -hmm. section or the chat section, um, Alina's asking if, um, or sorry, Eva. Eva's asking if um, you use fresh ginger for your vitamin C boost drink? Okay. Yeah. So, it's so all the stuff that I use is the roots. Okay. So I cut the fresh ginger, a little piece of it, and it depends. Uh -huh. so let me tell you about ginger. Ginger, when you have it uh, in that root, it's uh, spicy. Mm -hmm. So see how much spicy you can take when you, when you put that in your drink, okay? Mm-hmm. And every grocery store has ginger, even the commissary has ginger. Yeah, they have I, ginger and they, those, they look like roots. Look in the roots section. Uh, I'm a believer, and that's me, that the roots are the ones that give you the most nutrition, you know. So you can do powder if you can't get to the fresh ginger, but look for the fresh ginger first, as well as the turmeric. And it's actually cheaper to buy, like, in bulk, you know? Do you have any other questions or anything? We're good? We're feeling good? Yes? Thank you so much for everything. It was very yeah, important. Thank you. Yes, thank you. It was amazing. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks thank, for you. Hi. thank you. Thank you. Interesting topics. And then we will see everybody back um, a week from today. Is that working for everyone? Is that good? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys. We have one, four one workshops. Question. I'm so sorry. Um, I'm so sorry. Do we have to re-register for each specific one, or no? Okay. No, you don't. And the okay, same perfect. link. This link uh, remains the same for all the workshops. Okay. If you lose the link for whatever reason, go back on Eventbrite. Look up this event again. It's there. And I will also email all of you the recipe that Hayat was talking about for her vitamin um, C boost. And I will email out the link as well. Okay. But it's yeah. And uh, I will email the meditation to you. It's on YouTube and you can only find it through the link. Um, no, it's like a video. I'll email the video to you and it's a meditation and you guys can just enjoy it. Okay. 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 Thank you. Right. You're so well. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Okay.
Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Have a great day. <laughs>